These little guys right here, micro ratchets. There's so many of them on the market and they're so useful. But which ones are better? Many kits can be found available on places like Amazon, but that doesn't mean they're all the same. Let's go ahead and take a look at a bunch of these kits coming up next right here on Better Biomed. Everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a variety of different micro ratchet kits that are available on marketplaces like Amazon because these are what you're going to encounter the most and some of them definitely have different standards of quality. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the ones that I have right here including the Craftsman set that I have been a huge proponent of for years. But is it the best one? In some ways, yes, and in some ways, definitely not. So, let's go ahead and readjust this camera and take a look at all the different kits that I have right here in front of me. First off, let's go ahead and start with my tried and true Craftsman set. See this one right here? It has been with me through so much. And it's evident because I've only had to add a few things and a lot of my bits are all wore out. But what's really going on with this ratchet? The fit and finish of this Craftsman ratchet is beautiful. It's got quarter inch boxed end and it's got quarter inch ratcheting. It seems to work really good to this day, but it has an Achilles heel, one that just really irks me. Take a look right here at the head and you will see that there is actually a retaining ring. You can see the gap right there. Well. This guy here, when you are pressing down on something, you can see right there, the head pops out a little bit, see that? And what will happen is this retaining ring will pop off. So the, I don't know what they're getting at when they designed this, but if I really tried, yep, see, and there it goes. It didn't take very much downforce and it popped it out. You see that? And there's the ring. And when you're in the field working, that is so irritating. For all the things that I love about this ratchet, and, and you can see, like I can put it back on kind of quickly. See? Ta-da! Just like that, it's back on. But when it happens in the field, when you're working in a tight space, maybe you, let's say this retaining ring falls inside a piece of equipment, that is not what you want to happen. So that led me to many marketplaces to look at what other kits are on the market. Now, I, I love this one. I just really wish that they would change this right here. It's tiny and tiny is good because what we're often doing is we're often in really confined spaces. You see that? Look at the height of this guy. That is less than an inch for clearance. And that is really good when you're working on medical equipment. There's some really confined spaces. So, that's my Craftsman kit. It's definitely an alternative to a stubby screwdriver or a standard screwdriver. I mean, a stubby, you still got three inches or so of clearance that you have to make up for. This guy here is less than an inch. So let's go ahead and let's go through some of the kits. Now, all these kits are going to be um, compared to a premium bit kit. Now, I get that they're not premium prices but there's definitely a quality difference between these kits and that's something that you should be aware of. Now a premium kit, um, these ones here are Milwaukee bits. These are the best bits on the market. Now if I could just get the ratchet from those and change them out with Milwaukee bits, that would be a solid win. It would also maybe be a wee bit expensive. I mean, you're talking maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars worth of just bits because you've got metric, you've got standard, you've got Torx, and as you're going to see, a lot of these kits have sockets. So you're definitely talking $150 worth of parts to compile the perfect kit. So this is a good bit. And what they do is they start out with this diameter stock and they spin it on a lathe and then they mill it with flats. And that is how you get a good part. You can see there's some striations right there that, uh, that would be those little lines 
and that means that it is parted with a parting tool on a lathe. So they spin it, parting tool comes in and um, cuts it off, you mill it, and then it parts it again, and that's how you have a completed piece. Now, these are not punched. As far as I can tell, they're completely milled, which means that they start with a solid, hardened piece of stock and they cut it away. You're gonna see with some of these other bit kits, that's not exactly how they do business, but that is one of the reasons why the tolerances are so tight, because it's cut with a precision CNC to the correct um, dimensions. So anyway, that is Milwaukee bits, along with some of them are DeWalt bits. This, this started out as a DeWalt bit kit. So let's go ahead and move in and start exploring some of these. So this one here is a great talent off Amazon, made in China. You will see a difference between the made in Chinese versions and the made in Taiwan versions. So let's go ahead and explore Great Talent. So the Great Talent kit comes in a plastic box with a plastic flex hinge. If you guys have ever used these, you know that the plastic flex hinge is infamous for breaking. So maybe not for commercial use, but the ratchet here looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of flashing back here on the back. Let's see. Okay, so you can use it as a standard screwdriver. It's got that hole. I almost wish it didn't have that hole because that creates kind of a rough area, so I'll probably have to sand that down. But it does have the capability and there is a magnet in there. So this is pretty standard for a lot of these cheaper micro ratchets is that they have rivets, which are strong, but notice that it is not a perfectly smooth outer surface. Now, does that matter to you? I don't know. You can also see that the reverse right here does stick out and it could and sometimes does get accidentally triggered when, especially when you're going like this, but it's right where your fingers are gonna be. So it's a good chance that you might accidentally hit it. It does happen. Um, it's got a powdered centered metal for your uh, ratcheting gear head and it looks like it's extremely strong. I mean, look at the cross section of this guy. The metal, even though it's riveted, those rivets stick up, but this guy here is probably gonna last a long time. So this piece right here is powdered centered, and this one right here is powdered centered. Let's go ahead and take a look at how much clearance is in there. Ooh, it's got a strong magnet, all right? You can see it sucked it right out of my hand. So one of the things that I'm really curious about is the dimensions of the quarter inch hex. So you can see it flexing a little bit there. Let's try my Craftsman. Now this guy has got a lot of wear and tear. Let's see. Oh, there's no movement whatsoever on that Craftsman. And this guy's got years worth of wear and tear. Wow, come on. Holy cow, once, once the bit goes into the Craftsman, it's not coming out too easily. But there's little to no play on the Craftsman head. So this one here, it's got a little bit more play. Yeah, a little bit more, it's passable. One of the things I do like about this one is it's got the knurled edge on the outside. And that's because when you are ratcheting something, sometimes it's faster to just use your thumb. And I, I really dig that, just like that. So if I'm if I'm putting a fastener in to spin it down and then you can really get some torque on there. This one, it, it appears to be very strong. So I would say so far a win, a little uncomfortable because of the knurled bits that are sticking up, but those rivets actually make it very strong. So let's go into the bits themselves. Uh, here's a quarter inch bit. And this is straight bar stock, so it starts out with a quarter inch dimension. And all they do is they cut it, which you can see right here. See the swirl pattern? That is a quick cut. It's really fast. Little to say about the quarter inch because that's the original dimension, so very little milling. So let's go ahead and take it down a couple sizes. All right, so here, 
I'm going to let you see the fit and finish of these bits. They actually look really nice. Now all these ones that are super shiny, I almost always have problems with the Phillips, which this one here is not a standard Phillips. But overall, the quality of the bits looks like it's really nice. The Torx, Torx is a big one for medical. Torx looks pretty good. Now for the price, uh, I'll, I'll leave all these items in the description down below so that you can see links to them. As a kit, I wish it was in a better case, but for what it costs, the great talent kit, it's probably a really good alternative, right? So we have, uh, let's go left to right. So we got Phillips uh, all the way up to size uh, PH3. Uh, we've got some of the special uh, cross point. Uh, we've got another special cross point flat blades and we have standard and metric, hell yeah, um, for hex, Allen. And then we got square drive and then we've got Torx all the way down to T8 to T40. I actually really like this kit. It's a nice kit. All right, so that one was made in China, but the quality seemed to be pretty good. Let's go to the next one. This is a Kerr, and this one here, as you can tell, it's also made in China. All right, looks like Kerr is stepping it up. It's got a nicer case with magnetic hold downs. That is uh, really similar to the iFixit kits. That's really, really nice. The cool thing about these type of kits is this becomes a parts tray. So you, you put it down like that, and now when you uh, take screws out, you can put them in the parts tray. Very useful. I actually do that all the time with this guy. You can see how I put stuff in the lid. I just do that out of habit because when I take a piece of equipment apart, I use the, the lid to keep track of the parts. So it's, it's kind of cool that this guy does the same. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh my gosh. Okay, one of the first things I'll tell you is this ratchet is not coming out very easily. <laughs> not very easily. So whatever you do, do not place this ratchet down like this, all right? Always leave it so that the bit holder is up because if you can't get it out, all you gotta do is grab your adapter, stick it in there, and pull it up. See? Pretty easy. That's a tight fit. But it looks like everything was done right. As you can see, this one here is pretty similar to the last one. Got a lot of the same features. It feels like it's maybe a, a better quality. So this one doesn't have the uh, bit holder in the end to make it a screwdriver. I, that's kind of a useless feature. I would probably never use that because if I needed a screwdriver, I would just use a screwdriver. It's much more comfortable and you get more torque. I mean, look at this. These are square body. It's not really good to, to use as a screwdriver. It's It's got molding that goes all the way down the side. So almost every single surface that you're gonna grab has got uh, a nice comfortable grip. I will tell you that the ratcheting mechanism on this one feels a little bit tighter, a little bit better. Still got the rivets, but at the same time, those rivets guarantee that this guy is going to be a, a long-lasting tool that's not going to fall apart. Let's go ahead and take a look at the fit and finish. Okay. So you can see right there that there is a little bit of movement in there, which means the tolerances are a little bit looser on the head, but it's got a really strong magnet in there. <laughs> and one of the things that you'll notice about these guys, these type of wrenches versus mine, is when you're putting downforce on, this head is captive between the two metal plates. You see that? So you could probably really put a lot of force on this and it will not fall apart, unlike this guy. Although you can see that there's a size difference, right? This one's still tiny, so they had to give up something. But when it comes to a tool that you can really horse on, this one here probably is it. 
the reverse mechanism feels pretty good. It's a little bit stiffer than the other one, which is preferred because you don't want to accidentally trigger it. It's a good ratchet. The uh, quarter inch bit adapter. This guy does not really move. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow, that's wild. All right, so it's really latched on, really latched on, and you push it to get your bit out, which is almost natural anyway. So you push your bit into it while you're grabbing the collar. See that? And it comes out. All right, so that's, that's different, but that's a really positive latch. Okay, I get it. So you give up a little bit of dimension on this guy because uh, the diameter gets a lot larger. Whereas I generally try to stick to skinnier type of adapters like this, you know, because all it's got to do is be magnetic. Um, when it comes to retention, there's lots of mechanisms that you can use. Like this one here uses just a snap ring for retention and a magnet. I mean, I don't really need that positive of a bit hold, but um, that seems to be a really good bit holder. Really nice. It's a really positive latch. So this guy here has Phillips uh, one and two. We've got two flat blades. No, one, two, and three. We've got two flat blades. I've got an adapter for your sockets. And it looks like I have just three Torx and three, no, two metric, two metric Allens and a square drive. One of the other features about this guy here is it's got a magnetizer and a demagnetizer, which is kind of cool. Um, so the magnetizer, let's see how strong it is. I don't know how strong that guy is, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, it says it has that feature. Now let's get into the sockets. I like that it's got sockets. I really appreciate that. These are roll marked. So in order to uh, mark these, they put them between two rolling dies and it, it basically presses this pattern into the outside. Now I can tell you from the fit and finish of the sockets, that these guys are not too good. I mean, for what you probably need on a micro ratchet, they're good, but check out the fit and finish of the, the backside. Versus, let's let's say my Craftsman. You see the fit and finish of the Craftsman. Versus the inside of this guy. All right. These are not too far off in price, you know. Let's say within ten dollars of price between the two. That's why I feel it's justified in in rating them one versus the other. But the fit and finish of these sockets here is meh. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, it'll get the job done, right? The cool thing about this socket set is it does go from four millimeter up to thirteen millimeter. It's really tough. You can tell right here with my Craftsman set. I have none of them that go to that that size. All right, there. The smallest I have is five sixteenths, I think. Five sixteenths and eight millimeter. This one goes down to four millimeter, and I really needed a smaller size just yesterday, of all things. I really needed a smaller size, so that would have been a nice feature. So anyway, that is the Kerr set, and overall, it seems like a really nice set. I love the case. I like the case better than the Great Talent. But the great talent seem to have more bits and uh, probably more versatile as a tool. All right, let's go to my last Chinese set that I have here. This is Inwell, and this is one of the most expensive sets that I have. It says it's 58 piece. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now there are some features that they say. So these ones here, it's 58 piece chrome vanadium steel. Um, it's got a zinc alloy ratchet, which means it's gonna be light, but zinc alloy is probably die cast and we'll have to look at the quality of it. Let's take a look. Okay, so for this guy right here, we start out with uh, the ratchet and it is die cast. You can see that there is some flashing that goes around the outside. It might be, you know, minute. 
zinc and this this type of zinc alloy it's going to be really lightweight so it's really strong but it's lightweight overall as a ratchet since it's a tiny tiny little guy i would say that this guy is probably crazy strong you can put a, a lot of force on this guy let's check the tolerances I would say the tolerances are worse than maybe some of the other ones. And here's the other thing, is the magnetic retention is nowhere near as strong. In fact, I might actually get it to be able to fall out. It is still there, but just so you know, it's not as strong, all right? You can see some of the other casting marks right here, right here, and right down here. And it's just annoying, fit and finish. It is going to be probably pretty strong because it's built like a standard ratchet. And I do dig that right here is the reversing mechanism, which is a very positive lock. It's not sloppy, it's not loose, it's very positive. And I like it back here because when I'm gripping on things, I don't want to accidentally trigger the reverse mechanism when I'm grabbing onto it. You know, I can actually get my whole hand on there like this and kind of use it like a wrist ratchet. Wrist ratchets are the round ones and you, you know, they only have limited use, I think. But uh, you can use this one like a wrist ratchet because you don't have to worry about accidentally triggering that reverse mechanism. But um, okay, so there's that guy. Seems to be reasonably good. The fit and finish, again, roll marked um, sockets. You can see that the roll mark is not that great, but that's okay. Chrome vanadium, it's it's got a roll mark down here, the size is very definite. Fit and finish of these sockets is definitely better than the last one. You see that? These are much better sockets than the last one. So here is something that's gonna be different on some of these kits, is how they make their bits. Now this one here, let's see if I can get it in the light. See those uh, lines right down here? That means that these are punched. So they start out with quarter inch bar stock, and what they do is they mill this end down here round, and then they punch it through a die, and that gives you your final dimensions. Now I don't know, I should probably have a caliper set here and check these dimensions to make sure that they're really tight. But those striations right there are an indicator that it's punched. Which in my opinion, I don't think punched are as good as some of the other ones. But then again, this one here is not punched. I can see the little mill marks right here. In other words, uh, I can see the half circular uh, swirls. Yep, I can see half circular swirls in there. So this one here had a blade cut them. Uh, these appear to be very dense, very heavy uh, bits. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely punched. They seem to be pretty good quality. I like that they uh, trim down the diameter of the Phillips as much as possible because that allows us to get them into much better, um, much more locations. So I've got... Uh, a lot of Phillips bits. I've got uh, you know doubles of everything. I got doubles of one, two. Uh, I got four of the twos, and I got two of the threes. Obviously, we go through twos the most. And I've got standard size Allens, but it's got a hidden secret. So down here we have a collection of flat blades. That's cool. It, we have a lot of Torx. So for Torx, I've got uh, what is that? T10 all the way up to T40, and I've got doubles of all of them. That's cool. And I've got security torques after that, but I don't have metric uh, Allens. Uh, but, guys, you can use torques as metric Allens. So we do still have the capability. They're not as strong as, as standard um, Allens, but that's okay. The bit holder, is a honking piece of steel uh steel and aluminum put it that way but look at the diameter on that guy versus let's see versus this guy all right on one hand it's it's easier to get your your hand on 
I mean, yeah, it's... Oh, I wish this had a stronger magnet. So let's go ahead and try for retention. Oh yeah, it's locked in here. So unlike some of the other ones, this one here is a pull ejection. See how it kicks it out and holds it? That's a good feature. I like when I have to pull something versus uh, push it, but at the same time, that means if you're putting a socket in on something, you could accidentally eject your, um, your bit. That's why some of them have a pull is because that's an unusual thing. As you're pushing down, you could inadvertently hit something and cause your bit to come out, I guess. But um, for me, for common use, I like being able to put my hand over something like this and ejected my bit, just like that. Or versus push models, you gotta have to hold it, kind of push it out with your fingers. It's, it's not very ergonomic. So there we go. That's the bit holder. I mean, it is a rather large piece. I, I would like this to be a smaller diameter, but I like the function of it versus some of the other ones. So that is the Inwell kit. In my opinion, it's a pretty good kit. I would say that this one here is more heavy duty than some of the other ones. Probably going to take a bigger beating, especially since it's a uh, regular style ratchet. I dig it. Not too bad. In well. So that finishes up the line of Chinese ones. Now let's look at the bit kits from Taiwan. And we will start out with Sonix. So this here says this S2 steel, lifetime guarantee. It's a 38 piece bit. And this one comes in a rather nice, I like how it's got a clear face, um, aluminum case. So it's got a good latch on it, real riveted hinges, so I don't have to worry about a plastic hinge. Sonix, uh, I think, has one of the prettiest looking ratchets. Now this is a real ratchet, just like the other one. No real positive latch. It just kind of slides back and forth, but at the same time, there's there's not a lot of slop. It's either here or here. There's no real mid position, you see it? I can't even get it in a mid position. It wants to naturally sit one side or the other. So while it seems annoying, Notice that the mechanism is really low profile. That's a good thing because when you're in there reaching on something, you don't want this to be hitting cables and stuff and changing your direction. So I would say when it comes to quality of the ratchet, this is the best quality that I've seen, the Sun X. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tolerances. So th this bit that I'm using to check the tolerances, this is a brand new Milwaukee uh, Phillips number two. Oh, that's a strong magnet. Okay, the tolerance is pretty tight on this guy as well. So your ratcheting mechanism is being held in by a giant retaining ring. You see that? So it fits in a groove and it uh, looks like your triggering mechanism here is held in by a tiny little Phillips. That means you could really put a lot of down pressure and you don't have to worry about e ejecting. This here is probably the closest to quality uh, from all of them and this one here, I already explained that you put a lot of downforce and it ejects this cartridge. I don't have that problem with this one. It's captive inside the head. The fit and finish, I love this guy. Check that out. The Sonics, it's beautiful. These guys did a good job. This is made in Taiwan, guys. There's, there's definitely a difference. So let's go ahead and put this guy in. It's got a knurled head, which has actually got a lot of traction. I, I like that. So that's roll marked knurled, but uh, it feels really good. So in order to get a bit in, you pull it. It's It's got a really good grab and it does not eject the bit. It's because this guy also has a really strong magnet inside it. You can see it sucks it right in. I would say that this is one of my favorite pieces of all the kits. It's a smaller diameter than a lot of the other ones. I don't know if the camera really justifies it, but uh, this shank right here is pressed in to the sleeve, uh, which other 
places like Project Farm have proven that that's not the best design, but for a hand tool this small, you're never going to break that. So there are some locking um, ball bearings in here, and that's why it really latches on. It's never going to come undone. I like that. Quality of this kit is so far top notch. So let's go ahead and take a look at these bits. I can see that there is some really fine machining right here. And that means that these guys are spun on a lathe and they seem to have done a pretty good job. Let's take a look at some of the smaller ones. Okay. So I can see cut marks here. So these ones are precision machined. Yep, I can feel it. Very dense a little bit, precision machined. Not too bad. So I have, let's see, I have just a couple standard and no metric. Again, probably because they're relying on using uh, Torx as metric. I got several flat blades, a whole host of different uh, cross point and Phillips. So I've got PH1s, PH2s, and PH3s, plenty of each. I've got both uh, standard torques from T10 to T40 and security torques T10 to T40. Nice. It's one of my favorite kits so far. Sun X. And let's see, for the last one, gear wrench. Now this one here has got a different concept than some of the other ones. This is also made in Taiwan. Uh, gear wrench is a pretty good name in the tool industry. so. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how they fare compared to some of the other ones. So it comes in a, a hardened kit. Pretty cool. Um, how does this? Oh, okay. So it's got a, a latch, real hinges, everything. So this one's not in foam. This one here is in plastic. I actually prefer that because, for one thing, it doesn't hold my bits. I really hate when my bits are being held in like with the foam, I like just being able to grab them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fit and finish of these sockets. I grabbed the socket right away because it looks really pretty. Roll marked, no imperfections that I can tell on the roll marks. Let's take a look at this ratchet. This ratchet has got two different heads. Oh wow. Not only are they two different heads, but they have a different resolution. This one here is buttery smooth. Uh, so it says it's 5 16th bit quarter inch driver. Buttery smooth, look at that. I can just hold it and look at the resolution on that. I'm moving only what, one and a half degrees, two degrees in between teeth versus this one five to 10 degrees between teeth. That gives you two advantages. So the finer resolution means that you can just move it more slender in a tighter constraint, but the larger resolution gives you more strength. The reversing mechanism is absolutely tiny. See right here? It's got a real positive latch too. I dig it. Let's try the other side, the 5 16ths. Oh wow. Okay, so the quality of this tool is really high. I'll tell you that as a fact. Fit and finish of the wrench is really good. Yeah. All machined and polished. It looks nice. It fits really good in the hand too. I like that I got two different resolutions, but that means that it's got two different sizes. So not only can you use this as a dual ratcheting wrench for a quarter inch and five sixteenths, but that means we got two different sizes of bits. So let's take a look. We have metric and standard sockets, which that's cool. That's already a step up because we're going to use both those sizes. I have, oh wow, look at this. It goes, it goes huge. What size that? Let me take a look over here. That would be, holy cow, 
That is large. So that would be for the 5 16 size. Definitely a little bit larger. I love that resolution though. I hope, I hope it's strong. We got large flat blades. Oh my gosh. These would be so handy in so many different places. One of them that I can think of is uh, sometimes there's uh, aesthetic caps that are on some, some devices and they take a large flat blade. Sometimes a large flat blade is what it takes for uh, making adjustments on things. Nice, nice. It goes all the way up to T50. T50, that's a honking piece of steel right there. T50. I've got Allen's from 330 seconds to 5 sixteenths. So I've got the the one, two, and three Phillips. That's all I need. I've got the what one and a half, right? Five thirty seconds all the way up to nine thirty seconds flat blade. So small, medium, and large flat blade. I really dig. It goes up to T fifty for torques. That's really cool. As I said, the um, the sockets are quarter inch. So there's a quarter inch adapter right here. Ooh, nice, look at that. And the fit and finish of the socket seems to be pretty good. Good roll marking. So made in Taiwan, gear wrench. That's a nice kit. <sighs> so guys, if it was me and I was looking for a kit, I kind of prefer this one. I really do. Uh, most versatility in one kit and probably the closest to my original Craftsman set when it comes to the capabilities inside one kit. But I'll leave the links to all these in the description below. Explore, they all have their features. Some of them have a few drawbacks, but price goes both ways. So, and everybody's needs are different. So let me know what you guys think. Different techs have different needs for bit kits, but micro ratchets have a place in our kits and I'm going to replace my little Craftsman. Thanks for watching guys.